Hi, I'm Angus McKenzie, Editor-Chief of Motor Trend, and I'm here at the LA Auto Show with four of the key people behind one of the most important vehicles in General Motors' future, the Chevy Volt. And I have with me Bob Boniface, who's in charge of design, Tony Posowitz, who's the vehicle line director, Denise Gray, who's the battery expert, and Britta Gross, who looks after the infrastructure. Now, guys, there's been a fair bit of controversy about this car. It's very high profile. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced getting this car into production? Well, I'm going to tag team first with uh, with Denise because you can't talk about the Volt in an electric car without talking about the battery. How do we take new emerging lithium-ion technology that we've become familiar with in our devices, in our power tools, and how do we scale them up with the demanding requirements we have in our in our automotive environment, our demanding specifications like 10 years of life, 150,000 miles, and how do you make that all work? And Denise can probably elaborate a little bit more on some of the things that we're, we're facing. Well, batteries are the core of this car, aren't they? The battery is. In fact, um, one of our engineers mentioned that this is a four-passenger vehicle, but there's actually a fifth passenger in the vehicle, which is the battery. And you've got to think about it that perspective to make sure that it's cool, make sure that it's at the right temperature so that we can maximize the energy from the battery in order to propel the vehicle. Now, the problem with the battery is the same as it was in Thomas Edison's day. It's not a hugely efficient uh, means of storing energy. How have you been able to maximize that? With lithium ion, there's been a big improvement from lead acid to nickel metahydrite to where we are today with lithium ion. And there's still innovations yet to come you know, tomorrow. But it does have a great opportunity to store energy. And the energy density of lithium ion is a lot better than the ones uh, previous to that. So there is a mechanism by which to do it. And we think it's ready for production. Now, Bob, a lot of work's gone into optimizing the design of this vehicle for aero efficiency in particular. I mean, what were some of the things you had to really think about? Well, <clears throat> aerodynamic performance is based on keeping the air attached to the car. So you had to make sure you design the surface in such a way that you have smooth integration of the body forms, don't allow the air to detach from the surf surface and create turbulence and drag. But it'd be very simple to just design a pill shape and for efficiency. Uh, we're designers, so styling-wise, the car still has to look good. So you have to think about things like stance, uh, wheel track, wheel diameter, overhangs. The car has to be look, good, look good so people will want to buy it, but it still has to deliver on the aero promise. And, and we've accomplished both with the car. Now, Britta, your role signifies that this is a very different kind of car because for the best part of 100 years, the infrastructure, no one's really thought about that. What exactly does your job mean? Well, the, the good news is that the vehicle's been designed to be as convenient for customers as possible. So it, can, it, it plugs into any house plug. It's a 120 volt, 240 volt, it's compatible. That's the really good news. But the reality is, to make this vehicle appealing to many more consumers, the ones that live in apartment buildings, for example, we need a strategy for some public charging to be put in place. Also, a big part of this program is the cost of the vehicle and to make it more appealing again because we're intending to get this thing uh, into very mass production, make it more appealing to consumers. It means we've got to get the cost down. One way is to look at incentives. What can local communities do? What can local government do? What can state governments do? Federal government's already taken a big step forward with the $7,500 uh, tax credit that they've awarded for, for a vehicle that gets 40 miles. So we're working very carefully with these communities uh, to work on incentives, the public education outreach, and then this public charge um, uh, infrastructure that, that should be set up. Again, it's not really critical on day one, but some of that goes a long way to making people feel comfortable that there's even more charging out there than they, than they get just at home. There probably isn't a car that I'm looking forward to driving more than this one. If GM gets this car right, it could be a real game changer. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you.